Auto Lighting Optimizer is a function found on Canon's DSLR and mirrorless cameras that aims to improve your images by automatically optimizing their, their brightness and contrast. What's up everybody, I'm Jason and welcome back to some more tips and tricks for the Canon EOS R5. Now, as you might have guessed from the intro, this time we are going to talk about Canon's Auto Lighting Optimizer function. Now, that said, I usually have a disclaimer, and that one applies to this video as well. The Auto Lighting Optimizer is a software feature that is found on all of Canon's mirrorless cameras and many of their DSLRs. However, I'm especially or specifically going to be using the EOS R5 to test and demonstrate this feature and its settings. Now, as a result, the exact details of performance, where the settings are, and what the settings may be, may vary on your camera from, or may vary on your camera from what I'm showing here. So, what exactly is Auto Lighting Optimizer, and what does it do? Well, according to Canon, Auto Lighting Optimizer automatically adjusts the brightness and contrast of your images to prevent them from being too dark or having too much or too little contrast. Now, of course, with all of these kinds of magic functions, their inner workings are proprietary secret sauce, and none of the camera makers, Canon included, provide any detailed insights into the details of what they're going to do and how they're going to work. Obviously, that would help the competition too much. So, in my testing, I saw the most noticeable impacts from Auto Lighting Optimizer in the following areas. First, in unclipped highlight areas, so if the highlights are clipped, there's nothing you can do. But in unclipped highlighting areas, I would often see contrast be locally increased to bring out more detail out of the highlights. So think trees with the, on against a bright sky, and it brings out more of the tree detail. In dark areas, I would often see the brightness be raised to, again, bring out more detail. And finally, in the mid-tone regions, general brightness or darkness changes might be made depending on the overall brightness of the image, but when they were, they generally seem to be pretty subtle. Now, that said, all of these adjustments are dynamic, and they're based on what the camera evaluates the image needs. Now, that has some real imp implications in what I'm trying to talk to you about in this video, which means that some images won't see much of a change at all, while other images could see quite noticeable changes. Moreover, it means that whatever testing I want to do is really hard, and it's even harder to be able to predict what results you might see in your specific situations and scenes and setups and all of that ahead of time. Now that said, this is one place where mirrorless cameras have a huge advantage over their DSLR predecessors. These adjustments are applied to the live image as you are viewing the world, and you can see exactly what your image will look like ahead of time. So with that said, there are a couple of cautionary points that do come with using Auto Lighting Optimizer. First, and probably most importantly, is that using Auto Lighting Optimizer can increase image noise and potentially, as a result, affect perceived resolution. Anytime you brighten shadow areas where noise is the most, or will, where noise will be most significant in most images, or make local contrast adjustments, even in the highlights, there is always the risk of amplifying the existing noise that's in the image to unacceptable levels. Now, I tried to test this as best I could, and in my testing, at least m at most ISAs, I didn't really see that much of a problem having this on. However, at very high ISOs, spe specifically at 25,600 and above, I did see a noticeable increase in noise, even if the image didn't seem to have that much actual processing done to it. Now, that said, again, because all of these adjustments are dynamic and they depend on the specific image that you are looking at, the effect will depend, again, like I said, on that image as well as the level of auto lighting optimizer that you set to come up with what the camera calculates should be done, which means a more heavily processed image at a lower ISO could certainly see a larger change in noise levels than what I saw in my testing. The second, Canon cautions that Auto Lighting Optimizer may increase the image brightness 
even when the exposure compensation or flash exposure compensation is set. And specifically, this can cause an image to be brighter or bright, even when you've set negative exposure compensation to make it darker. Now, in my testing, I couldn't actually cause this to happen, but that doesn't mean it won't potentially be a problem. When I dialed in negative exposure compensation on the test images that I was shooting, they got darker. Now, again, this is all a dynamic thing with no predefined, well, it just does this. So it is absolutely possible, again, that I just didn't have the right scene or considerations for that to work. And in your situation, you may run into this problem. Now, I also tried testing with a flash. However, the complexities of TTL flash metering and ambient light and all of that kind of stuff, and again, the dynamic nature of auto lighting optimizer gave inconclusive at best results. Uh, I can't say for sure whether you might see a problem there or not. In either case, it is absolutely worth being aware of the potential problem that exists with auto lighting optimizer and exposure compensation. So with that said, let's talk about the availability and conflicting settings when using Auto Lighting Optimizer. So Auto Lighting Optimizer is available in both photo and video modes. Moreover, settings are saved independently for both of those modes on your camera, as well as for each of the custom shooting modes. So that's the C1, 2, and 3, and again in both modes as well. So like there's eight different places this could actually be set. Now, as a result of this separation, turning Auto Lighting Optimizer on in video mode will not also turn it on in photo mode and vice versa. Now, Auto Lighting Optimizer is automatically enabled at the standard level when the camera is set to the Scene Intelligent Auto Mode. So that's the A with the little plus next to it that you find at the beginning of the list of exposure modes in your mode menu. Finally, in photo mode, Auto Lighting Optimizer cannot be combined with either HDR PQ or Highlight Tone Priority. And in video mode, that limitation also extends to include Canon Log and HDMI RAW as well. So with what it does out of the way, let's look at how to set it up and turn it on. Now, Auto Lighting Optimizer can be controlled on your camera from three different places in the camera. The camera's menu system, the quick control menu if you're in photo mode, and directly from a programmable button function. Now, in the camera's menus, Auto Lighting Optimizer is found on the Shoot To menu, fourth setting down from the top. If you enter the Auto Lighting Optimizer submenu, you will find that you can choose from four levels, off, low, standard, and high, along with a secondary setting that controls whether Auto Lighting Optimizer is automatically disabled when you put the camera in either manual or bulb modes, assuming that it was otherwise enabled. Now, the manual bulb exception can be toggled by either pressing the info button on the back of your camera or by tapping the on-screen checkbox, and this applies everywhere that it is found. Next, in photo mode, auto lighting optimizer settings can be found in the quick control menu. They are the second icon up from the bottom on the right side column. And here too, you have access to all of the same settings as you did in the menu. So all four levels, as well as the manual bulb exception toggle. Now, finally, you can program any of the programmable buttons on your camera, except for the shutter release and multi-controller, to directly access the Auto Lighting Optimizer settings. And again, as with the previous two mechanisms, you have access to all four levels, as well as the manual bulb exception toggle. Now, since this isn't a default for any of your camera buttons, you will need to program one through the Customize Buttons menu on the Custom Function 3 menu page. So, for example, I've set the Depth of Field Preview button to bring up Auto Lighting Optimizer as a demonstration. Now, when Auto Lighting Optimizer is enabled, its effects are seen in the live image and, of course, made into the camera or baked into the camera created JPEGs. And that includes the preview images that are stored in your RAW files. Now, if you shoot in RAW while the uh, auto lighting optimizer changes are baked into the preview images, the actual RAW data remains unchanged and 
all that the camera does is saves the auto lighting optimizer level as some metadata, which can then be applied by Canon's digital photo professional software in post automatically. Moreover, since auto lighting optimizer is just being stored as metadata, it can be disabled or have its level changed in post compared to what the camera was set to with no loss in quality if desired, again, when shooting raw. Now, currently there are no third-party raw processing programs. So for example, Adobe's Lightroom or Phase One's Capture One that support using Canon's auto lighting optimizer algorithm and they simply ignore the metadata. So that just leaves us with the question, should you enable auto lighting optimizer or not? And I'll gotta be honest here. Uh, I had a very visceral reaction to this question when I started putting this video together. I wanted to say, shout even, no, auto lighting optimizer should not be used, it's bad. However, after looking at what it did and how it behaved, I can actually see places and situations where having it on makes sense, and of course places where it doesn't. Now I know people will always argue with the idea of using these kinds of magic in-camera processing things and not just doing everything in RAW and processing it manually. But ultimately, I think we sometimes lose sight of the point, which is to get the image that you, uh, get an image, I should say, that you like and that, that it looks good to you and is the one that you had in your mind's eye when you started shooting. And auto, if auto lighting optimizer gets you to that image without additional work, then I think it doesn't really matter if somebody else says it's the wrong way to do photography, you should consider using it. Now, that said, if you shoot raw, because auto lighting optimizer does not affect the raw image data, it's not helping you. However, it does affect the live and review images and their histograms. And you almost certainly don't want this as it means that the in-camera images, live view, and both the live and review histograms will reflect the actual raw data even less than they already usually do. Consequently, if you are a raw shooter, keep auto lighting optimizer turned off. Now, if you're a JPEG shooter, the question is actually a bit more interesting and nuanced. An auto lighting optimizer can certainly be useful depending on your situation. Ultimately, it comes down to the fact that JPEGs are significantly more compressed than RAWs. And since the compression is lossy and getting that higher level of compression means that significantly more information is being thrown away in that process. So when auto lighting optimizer or really any other processing is done in camera, it's done to the image data that's before it's been compressed. So on one hand, this of course means that those changes are indelibly baked into the image that you create from the moment you push the shutter release. However, it also means that you get better, a better quality image compared to applying that same effect to an unprocessed in camera or an unprocessed image from the camera in post. So what should you do then? Well, the unsatisfying answer here is that you should test it and decide for yourself. However, since auto lighting optimizers impacts can be seen in the EVF when you're shooting, you're fully able to see what you're getting before you ever hit the shutter release. Now that said, I did look at a number of images from my image library and how they looked with, with and without auto lighting optimizer applied. And to my eye, nothing looked worse when auto lighting optimizer was enabled. So with that said, here's my take on auto lighting optimizer for you JPEG shooters out there. If you are shooting something that you're not super serious about, and of course people will race to the comments to argue what that means and what that should mean for you and how dare you not be a serious photographer with an expensive camera, ignoring the fact that this is found on even the cheapest cameras, whatever. Thing is, is I suspect you are a better judge of when you're being serious or not, so you should go with what you think is right. In any event, the, in that case, not being serious, enabling auto lighting optimizer probably won't hurt and certainly may help the images come out better. 
This is going to be even more true if you have zero inclination to do any kind of post-processing on your images. You just want to hit the shutter release and have a decent looking picture. So in that situation, auto lighting optimizer set to low or standard should be absolutely fine to have enabled. Now, if you are doing something more serious, well, in this case, I first recommend doing some actual testing when the kind of situation that you're going to be shooting in before, you know, you go shoot something with it. Or alternatively, use the fact that you can quickly toggle this through the quick control menu or a button function and turn ALO or auto lighting optimizer on while you're shooting and see if you like what the image would look like. Now, all that said, one place where I absolutely would say to stay away from having auto lighting optimizer enabled is at the very high ISOs. And this is simply due to the increased potential for uh, non-good image noise. Now, that said, I, as always, I'm going to encourage you to test and try things out if this is the kind of thing, like, again, if you're a JPEG shooter, this is where you probably might want to try it and not just take my word on it being the right thing to use. So that is Auto Lighting Optimizer. If you found this useful or at least interesting, let me know by hitting that like button and sharing this. If this kind of thing seems like it might be your kind of thing, please consider subscribing if you aren't already. Finally, if you'd like to help support this channel and more content like this, please consider hitting that thanks button if you can or buying something you've always wanted from an affiliate link in the description below. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.